This is not clickbait. Catholicism and Orthodoxy are evil, satanic, pagan, and they do have twisted teachings. Now, before you go ahead and click off this video, dislike it, unsubscribe, this is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I know this might offend many, but I pray and I hope and I implore you to not react to like typical Muslims. Because what Muslims will do whenever you have any refutation towards their belief system is they'll be quick to unfollow you and insult you and demean you and say that you have a demon and all these crazy insults of character instead of actually dealing with the verses at hand, instead of actually dealing with the history at hand, instead of actually refuting your claims, they'll go ahead and insult you and do away with you. So I implore, if you genuinely believe that you're a true man or woman of God, to actually listen to the full video, and then at the end you can go ahead and make any claims against any evidence I provided. But I say this in true humility, I do love you, regardless if you're a Catholic or Orthodox, and I do believe that there is a level of you guys being closer to the tr truth than uh, someone who is like a Muslim or Buddhist or atheist. You guys are definitely closer to the truth, uh, at least for the ones that I know. Now, would you guys, would I say that you guys have the truth or the absolute truth? Absolutely not. I believe that you guys have a perverse version of the truth. And it's not just my opinion, but I can actually support this from the scriptures, from the word of God. And I know this opinion isn't really popular. It's not spoken about against uh, by other Protestant influencers or uh, people on YouTube and Instagram and social media. And I believe a big reason for that is because, you know, they're afraid of offending people. Maybe uh, there's a sense of they want to have this false sense of unity, which honestly is not biblical. And I honestly wanted that sense of unity. But I, the more I just look in the word of God and the more I was just like praying to God and thinking to God and my thoughts, I was I was like, God, should I speak against Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy more? And I, I, I just I didn't want to because I was like, oh, well, how is this going to look in front of Muslims? Right. But the reality is, guys, I got so much conviction this morning when I received a comment from one of you guys. And I actually have multiple comments like this. Because my videos, people watch my videos, they end up leaving Islam, and then they're stuck with the question, what should I become next? And this is my job to be able to tell you what that is according to the word of God. And I personally, I know this video is going to offend many people, but the reality is this, guys. If I don't say it, guess who's going to be accountable in the eyes of the Lord on Judgment Day? I am their blood is going to be on my hands. If you guys aren't aware, and I don't say this in a prideful way or an egotistical way, but if you guys are only aware of the people who watch my videos every single day and the amounts of people who watch my videos every day, I have at least, like I'd say, around 100,000 people every single day watching my content. So I say this in a way to allow you to understand the, the impact that my videos have on souls all around the world. My my videos are that impactful that around 100,000 people come to watch my videos every single day. And so what I actually say matters. And so I have to be very cautious of this and make sure that I stick to the word of God because God is gonna hold me accountable in judgment day. And if I don't speak against Catholicism and orthodoxy and their very unorthodox pagan teachings, God is going to hold me accountable. My blood, their blood will be on my hands. So we have to make sure that we put the word of God first before man-made tradition. And before Catholics and Orthodox, and I do want to get into the biblical evidence for this, but before you guys say that I'm coming from a place of ignorance, or I'm coming from a place of pride, or have demons inside of me, or I'm causing division in the body of Christ, first of all, there's so many issues with that, with those claims. First of all, Catholics and Orthodox aren't a part of the body of Christ. Now, can there be someone that just came to the faith and maybe they're a little ignorant on some doctrines? Absolutely. I personally myself was ignorant on some doctrines. That's a whole nother story. But I personally fell into a lot of false doctrines. I genuinely believe I was saved because I believe in the true gospel. But I believe that if you're truly saved, if you're a true born again Christian, 
that even though you might believe in some false doctrines, you're eventually going to come to the truth because you're going to keep seeking after God, after Jesus Christ, and he'll reveal those things to you. He'll take the scales off your eyes and he'll go ahead and give you eyes to see, ears to hear. So even if you do believe in, um, you know, the immaculate deception, even if you do believe in infant baptism, even if you do believe in all these like doctrines that are unbiblical or maybe more heretical doctrines, like you believe in a war, um, not maybe not a works based gospel. But, you know, you get my point, even though you may believe in certain doctrines that are unbiblical, I believe that you could be saved. However, if you continuously live in uh, this state of accepting this unbiblical doctrine, that's where the issue comes in, because for you, it counts as a sin because you're no longer ignorant to it. You're not a born again Christian. One thing is if Sally just became a Christian two weeks ago and she believes in a false doctrine, God's not going to like judge her for that because he knows that she's literally just ignorant on it. But another thing is we have a guy named Michael. He's been a Christian for six years. He's read the Bible two times in a row and he knows that it's a false doctrine. But because of his man-made tradition, he chooses not to leave it behind. There's a difference between Christian A and Christian B. One that's ignorant of the truth and one that's not ignorant of the truth, but one that just chooses to profusely go against the word of God for their man-made tradition. And the word of God warns us about this. The word of God warns us to not be led by our emotion, to not be led by man-made tradition, but in, in fact, to follow the traditions of the apostles, to follow the word of God. And while Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox might say that they're following the traditions of God, they're following the traditions of man. We can actually date back these things from a historical timeline. We can see how in historically inaccurate and how unbiblical the practices you guys do are. Now, I do believe there are certain circumstances where we as real born again Christians. How can I say this? Because I know a lot of people are going to say that I'm uh, how can I say it? that? I, I guess I'm, I'm seeking a false sense of unity and that's not the case at all. But. When it comes to like, let's say, for example, if there's a Muslim and there's a Roman Catholic and I'm a Christian, I know both of them are unsaved. But re realistically, even though the Roman Catholic doesn't have the full truth, they're closer to the truth than the Muslim by by a lot. Right. I think a big thing is, is that if I had to choose one, I would definitely choose the Muslim just because we kind of share that common ground where we believe in the Bible, even though we have a different interpretation. So there are instances where I would work against the Muslim. I'm not just going to go against both of them because I would go for the Muslim first. Then afterwards, I would go ahead and confront the Roman Catholic like, hey, I know we just talked to the Muslim, but what you believe is false because of this, that, whatever, the third. Right. So I believe that we do also have to have wisdom and discernment in certain situations. I think we have to kind of like choose our enemies wisely, because even though we do disagree with uh, really satanic and pagan practices, we have to be really wise on like there is that sense of commonality there that they do accept the Bible. However, we do have to call them out at the same time because what they believe in is unbiblical. So. We don't want to have a sense of false unity, but at the same time, we don't want to have this hyper uh, this hyper sense of not using wisdom and not using discernment in certain situations. Um, but it is made very clear that we should speak against all evil. So I'm not saying for us to um, to for us to blend in and act like we're Catholics and Orthodox because that's far from the case. But there are certain circumstances where the reality is we are going to have to have these discussions. And that's why I say that biblically speaking, you don't get these doctrines. And I could go into scripture all day proving that Catholicism and Orthodoxy are unbiblical, but it's really of a heart matter. So I'm going to go ahead and um, give some verses to prove that or Catholicism and Orthodoxy are unbiblical. And then after that, I'm going to get into how it's actually heretical. Because there's a huge difference between a sect being unbiblical and heretical. For example, um, there are certain sects that don't believe in speaking in tongues. And there's some that believe in speaking in tongues. That's not a salvific issue. That won't save you or not save you. You're still going to go to heaven whether you believe in it or not. However, it's an unbiblical thing, um, re regardless on which side you're on. And so God will eventually bring you to the ultimate truth, I believe. 
And so there are certain things that are heretical, and those are the most important things. So, for example, when we look at Catholicism, they believe in the practice of infant baptism. Now, this is a concept that's never brought out in Scripture. You do see children being baptized, but you don't see infants being baptized. There's a distinction. And the reason why I make that distinction there is because, for example, in Acts chapter 8, verse 36 to 37, which if you guys aren't aware, is actually removed in the Catholic Bible, which I wonder why it's removed in the Catholic Bible, because it refutes Catholicism. But if you read uh, certain translations like the KJV translation, it will tell you um, the Ethiopian eunuch asked Philip, what hinders me from being baptized? And Philip answered and said, thou mayest, if, if thou mayest believe with all thine heart, thou must, that, then you can go ahead and be water baptized. So basically he had to have faith first, then he could be water baptized. That's the reason why the Catholic translation took that out of their Bible, because it's concrete evidence that infant baptism is unbiblical. Now, yes, children, no one denied that children can be baptized because they're of age to believe and have faith in Jesus Christ, but not infants. There's a distinction there. So infant baptism is not of God. Now, that won't make you necessarily go to hell for doing infant baptism, right? But I, I say those things because it lets you know that there is a sense of man-made tradition within the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Church, okay? And whenever I use Catholicism, it can be intermingled with Orthodoxy because they're pretty much of the same flock, right? And now another thing that's very unbiblical about both of these churches, um, well, specifically the Roman Catholic Church, is they, they actually call it priest father. And so whenever you look at the term father, Jesus Christ, he says, no one called no man father. No one goes on to the father except through me. That's what Jesus Christ says. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. There's no way that we can play semantics with this. You're literally just denying the word of God. For your own vain tradition, traditions of man and not traditions of God. And if you want to subscribe, if you want to unfollow, if you want to falsely accuse me and slander my name because I'm preaching the word of God, then so be it. Because I'm willing to stand by the word of God and not this false sense of peace, this false sense of humility and seeking worldly validation and approval. Because trust me, guys, I don't care what others think. Yes, I have to defend my testimony. Yes, I have to go ahead and defend my character of who I am as a born again Christian. But I don't what I mean is I don't care what people think. Like if you want to go ahead and unsubscribe, if you want to go do this, if you want to go do that, trust me, by all means, go ahead. So, I mean, whenever we look at Catholicism, you guys are literally calling your priest father and scripture tells us not to do that. And. I'm not going to go into details about specific situations that I've encountered recently, but let me just say, if you believe that you have to go to your priest for everything, for example, prayer or things like that, and you don't, you, you kind of lack that direct connection with God. You, you lack that direct connection with God the Father because you have to go to a priest to pray for you on your behalf. There's nothing wrong with asking people for prayer. However, if you believe that you have to go to your priest for prayer, as a direct connection between you and the Father, that's an issue. And this is a big issue in the Roman Catholic Church. And it's also in Eastern Orthodoxy, although it's not an actual specific doctrine within the Eastern Orthodox Church, this is heavily practiced within their belief system as well. So if you believe that you have to go to your father or your priest for some kind of uh, for some kind of like forgiveness or prayer to God or answers, then that's a huge, huge issue because we should always look at the word of God. The word of God is all we need. We don't need man between our relationship with the Father, only Jesus Christ. Another big issue that we can actually see within Roman Catholicism as well is the repetitive prayers, the repetitive beats with the rosary beats, right? This is actually a practice that can be taken all the way back to 1090 AD, guys, literally a thousand years after Christ. None of this is orthodoxy. None of this is biblical, guys. It was literally invented by Peter the Hermit and made popular by St. Dominic in 1208 AD. 
So this is what I'm saying. Catholics believe that uh, basically Mary appeared in 1208 AD. And then uh, basically this proves that they can go ahead and posture towards Mary and uh, look at her towards veneration and that they can use the, the rosary beads. But all it is is modern day paganism. It's satanic and you guys are doing idolatry. And so I know a lot of Catholics will say, oh, no, we're just venerating just how you guys ask people for prayers. No, you're not. If you're truly venerating, you wouldn't be praying to the dead, which is also another issue because that's necromancy. You're praying to the dead. And then if you want to claim that she's, oh, she's living in heaven. Well, guess what? She could be alive with Jesus Christ. But then guess where the issue is with that? Well, it's still necromancy and it's still satanic. You want to know why it's satanic? Because you have the assumption that Mary is all knowing and all seeing. How can she hear your prayers from Africa, from uh, from Egypt, from from Libya, from uh, even Europe, from China, from America, from Canada, from Peru, from Mexico, from Belize? How can she hear all your prayers at once unless she's all knowing? So this goes to refute the claim, the fact that Mary and the saints in heaven hear our prayers, because that's far from the truth. You're giving them the assumption that they're all knowing like God. And so whether you realize it or not, whether you realize it or not, that's idolatry. It's unbiblical. And I do know that there is a desire nowadays, because I see it a lot with my generation, to go to Roman Catholicism and Greek Orthodoxy, because it sounds cool. It sounds, uh, it sounds ancient. It sounds like uh, traditional compared to all these modern denominations. And trust me, I totally get it. I was in your shoes as well before, guys. I totally get it. And I and I, I completely agree. Like, uh, there's a lot of churches today, especially in the Protestant denomination, unfortunately, that have strayed away from the truth. And, you know, and a lot of modern day denominations there, you see a pastor eating a donut and skinny jeans, and they're all walking around like hippies and stuff being slain in the spirit. And that can really be off putting to people that want tradition. And I completely get that there should be tradition in the church. And I respect that. But at the same time, if that means that we have to go to tradition that was made after Christ, then is it really tradition or is it man-made tradition? Because it's not a tradition from the apostles. Why don't we go back to the ancient tradition that was actually taught in the word of God? Not tradition from hundreds of years ago or a thousand years ago. Let's go to the tradition of the apostles 2,000 years ago. Let's go back even further than Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. Not man-made tradition. And so, I, and again, I know this is offensive, but I say this out of love. I don't believe that uh, whenever I look at Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, I do believe a lot of you guys, and this is the truth because I've spoken to many of you guys on a personal level. You guys usually fall into two categories. This is the reality with them. So for any of you guys talking to them, especially in the comments, probably. Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholics are either a they just came to the faith and they're really ignorant to like, you know, Christianity and things. And that's why I say there's Christian A and Christian B. There's one that's ignorant. And then there's another one that's been in the faith for like five, ten years. And then they were willfully ignorant. God's going to judge them accordingly. But if you're just like, you know what I mean? You just joined the faith. You don't know any better. You just joined like three, six months ago. God's not going to judge you for being a Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox. There's still room for us uh, for, for spiritual growth. Right. And that's the that's the thing about being a Christian. There's always room for growth. Um, but whenever it comes to the these these sects specifically, it's we have to be we have to be real guys. They're very unbiblical, they're heretical, and they're not of God. And so I've talked to a lot of Catholics and, and Orthodox on a personal level again, and a lot of them are either there because of their ignorance or they were there because they grew up in it. So maybe I'm Mexican and I grew up in the Catholic Church or I'm Filipino and I grew up in the Catholic Church. But the reality is, guys, God tells us to hate our mother and our father. Now, does this mean to literally hate our mother and our father? Absolutely not. But what he's insinuating or what he's saying literally is that we have to hate our mother and our father in comparison to the love that we have for Jesus Christ. So even if that means living Islam as a Syrian boy. Because I see that Islam is wrong and Christianity is true. And I know that my whole family is going to hate me and disown me. That's what it means to be a Christian. So even though I may be living in Mexico or the Philippines and I grew up in a Roman Catholic family, 
And I know by becoming a Protestant, they're going to say, oh, you're leaving your traditions. Why are you going to become like one of those Protestants? That's what I have to do because that's what makes me a born again Christian. So that's why scripture, the word of God tells us to be able to hate our mother and our father in comparison to Jesus Christ. It's not that we literally hate our mother and our father, but the love that we have for God must be greater than our human parents because God is our everlasting father. So even though you're rejected by your family, your friends, your loved ones, guess what? Jesus Christ will always accept you because here's the thing. Man will fail you, but God will never fail you. And so, yes, you're going to be rejected for leaving Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. There's a high chance that you will. But what's more important is your salvation or the knowledge and wisdom of man. Because like the word of God tells us, let the word of God be true and every man a liar. They became fools because they were so into their human knowledge and wisdom and intellect that they, 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 they forsake God. Professing to be wise in the book of Proverbs, they became fools. So what's more important, human wisdom, human knowledge on false history, on biased history, or the word of God? Which is more important? And so now that we've talked about history and, you know, just the biblicalness of everything, I do want to get into the two main heretical things that I find with Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. These are the two main heretical things I do find with them. And before I get into that, let me just give a 30 second speech before I get into that, because I do want to make something very clear that I remembered is that Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholics, by the way, just so everyone knows watching this, they actually consider me a heretic, too, because I'm a Protestant. They're not going to say that, obviously, but that's how they truly feel inside. So I do want to make that clear before people say, oh, you're causing division in the body. I'm not causing division in the body. Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox aren't a part of the body of Christ, guys. They're heretics. And that's what I'm getting into next. So before you guys say, oh, you're just a bad Christian. I'm on subscribing, Nate. You went down the wrong path. I, I already know. Because I've seen actually stuff like this uh, in Speaker's Corner recently, people talking about this stuff. And I was thinking, should I talk about this or will this cause division in the body? And then I received comments from, from, from other uh, believers that just came to the faith and they were curious of whether they should become Catholic or not. And that gave me conviction to talk about this stuff. So if you're a Catholic and you're an Orthodox listening to this and you don't like my message, you really just don't like what the Word of God teaches. Because the Holy Spirit is leading me to make this video with the Word of God in mind. I'm using the Word of God in this video. So if you don't like this, that's a hard issue between you and the Lord God Almighty. And no, I'm not ignorant of the faith. I've been researching Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy for years, beyond your imagination. I know I'm young, but I also research at a very, very young age. God has used me at a young age to be wise. And I don't do this to self uh, to, to self bloat myself or uh, be arrogant or prideful. But at the same time, I have to make this very clear so that people in the comments don't falsely accuse me of being ignorant or having a demon or things of that nature. So now that we can get into the heresies of the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Church, there's two main issues. One, the salvation that you guys believe in is very unbiblical. The salvation that you guys personally believe in is not that we're saved by grace through faith alone, and that's it. You guys believe that we're saved by grace through faith alongside the sacraments or other works, and that's not biblical. Nowhere in Scripture do you see that. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's it. Look at the apostles. Look, let me look at the apostles. They were imperfect. Look at uh, the thief that died besides Jesus Christ on the cross. He didn't get water baptized. He didn't take the sacraments. He didn't do the Lord's Supper. He wasn't a part of the Roman Catholic Church. He was in Eastern Orthodoxy. He had faith in Jesus Christ. And God said, today, you will be with me forever in my kingdom. The Italian centurion in the book of Acts, what saved him? It was his faith. Jesus said, it's your faith that saved you. The Italian Roman centurion, his faith is what saved them. Not his good works, 
because he was unrighteous in the eyes of God, but because he had faith in Christ, God forgave him instantly, just like that, in the snap of the fingers, and he became born again and saved. So I encourage you, maybe you are new to the Roman Catholic faith or the Eastern Orthodox faith, or maybe you're not, but maybe you were ignorant about this stuff. But I encourage you to read the word of God. I encourage you to, and this is a big issue. These two sects don't read the word of God, because if you did, honestly, a lot of you would not be a part of these sects. If you truly, genuinely read the word of God without the intermediate of a uh, priest, of a father, or other people interpreting the word of God for you, interpret the word of God for yourself. God gives us that authority to interpret the Bible. So we must understand and read what the word of God tells us. And no, it's not wrong to have elders to help you in your faith of Christ. No one's saying that. That's a, that's a great thing if you have that. Not everyone has that privilege. So if you do, that's great. But the issue is if your elders that are being used to quote unquote lead you are in error themselves. And how can you know that? The only way you can do that is by reading the word of God. So now let me go ahead and get into the second heresy. And I don't want you guys to go in this with the mentality of, ooh, how much can I prove Nate born again wrong? But is what he's actually saying biblical or not? And so the second, and outside of salvific issues, there's another thing that I personally, in my opinion, and I know a lot of Protestants even might not agree with me on this, but I personally believe this is unbiblical because from a biblical standpoint, if you worship any other gods, I believe you're, you're already a heretic. You know, so whenever you look at Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, they do tend to believe in uh, veneration of the saints. They believe in praying to the saints to get their prayers answered more abundantly or quicker or whatever the case may be. Right. But they believe in this stuff. And the reality is they're committing necromancy. They're praying to other false gods and idols. Because if you look at ancient Roman history and all throughout Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy, Susan Wong. Basically, these saints are just their pagan deities, and they transform them into the saints, guys. I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but I encourage you and I implore you, if you're a Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, instead of being ignorant to the truth, and instead of being prideful and being puffed up in your ego, and your history, and your theology, and your philosophy, and your worldly academia and education, I implore you, please, out of love, genuinely, look at this stuff for yourself. Don't look at it a way to disprove it or a way to, oh, I'm going to prove you guys wrong because we're the true Orthodox Church. No, look at it in a way to actually genuinely seek truth and learn. Ask God to reveal it to you, and he will. If, you're, if you have a genuine, humble, contrite heart, if you want, talk to God in complete humility. And so the reality is, whether you like it or not, when you're praying to these idols, I mean, they literally worship them, whether they like to admit it or not. They kiss them. They bow down to them. Look at this stuff, guys. They literally kiss them. They idolize them. And even if you don't kiss them, and even if you don't quote unquote bow down to them, guess what? You're still praying to them. And the reason why that's satanic and pagan and that's twisted and evil is because whenever you do that, guys, you're assuming again that the saints have the assumption, you're you're under the assumption that the saints have the ability to be all knowing, that they're omnipresent. That they're everywhere all the time and they're able to hear prayers from Africa to South America to Belize, to Jamaica, to Southeast Asia and the Philippines, to Mexico, to Canada, to Iraq, to Yemen. So you're telling me that these saints can hear all prayers from all around the world at the same time. That's literally heretical, guys. That's a heresy. And then a lot of you guys will say, ooh, who are you to say? Who are you to say that God can't give them that ability? Well, I'm not saying that God can't give anyone ability to do anything. Literally, he's an infinite God. But never do you see this concept practiced in scripture. And to say that they're omnipresent and that they have the ability to be all-knowing, that makes them equal to God. So God wouldn't do it because it goes against his nature. It goes against his character to answer that. So that's why God wouldn't do it. So we have to make sure that we look at the word of God and everything in this world makes sense around us, guys. Read the word of God, let the word of God change you, and don't try to change the word of God. That's the issue is because you look at the word of God and you try to change the word of God instead of letting the word of God change you. And I know this is not going to be a popular video, and if it is a popular video, I'll lose a lot of subscribers.
So trust me when I tell you, I'm not doing this for the fame, the clout, the money, the recognition, what people think about me, human validation, because I'm going to lose a lot of money from this. I'm going to lose a lot of recognition from this. I'm going to lose a lot of friends from this. I'm going to lose a lot from this, from sharing the truth. But this has to be said, and I say this out of genuine love. And I really hope and pray that if you are in part of these churches that are heretical, that you truly genuinely listen to this with a contrite heart, a humble heart. And um, I hope that you guys come to Jesus Christ. If any of you guys are uh, ex-Catholics or ex-Orthodox, please go ahead and comment below. Share your testimony so that people can see the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share how he changed your life. I personally have spoken to ex-Catholics and Orthodox, and when they become born-again Christians, like true Christians, guys, the, the relief on their shoulders, they feel like a sense of fulfillment and peace and love and humility that they've never felt before on a whole nother level because they're in the fullness of God, the fullness of truth in God, in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, guys. You don't get that with Roman Catholicism, guys. I'm sorry. You don't get that with Eastern Orthodox. I know they seem ancient. I know they seem traditional, but they're far from it, guys. And so, I, again, I say this out of love. And I personally have been to Roman Catholic churches, so I'm not ignorant to this stuff, guys. I've been to them. I've been inside of them. And trust me, I, I, I can tell you guys from personal experiences, they're very beautiful inside. It feels like a, it feels very traditional. And I completely agree. There's a sense of uh, tradition that you feel when you walk into a Roman Catholic church. But the reality is not the tradition of Christ. It's the tradition of man. And it's a tradition that was invented a thousand years ago, 1500 years ago, but it wasn't invented at the time of Christ. And it wasn't the traditions that the apostles of Christ followed. And there's much evidence I could prove what I'm saying. For example, I can show how Peter and Simon, how he was the first pope, but yet he had a wife. Multiple times in the word of God, Peter and Simon showed them to have a wife. I can show how the immaculate conception is actually immaculate deception and how Mary actually was not just a virgin. Yeah, until she gave birth to Christ, but after that she gave birth to other kids. And we know this because the book of Matthew tells us, and Jesus also had brothers, half-brother, for example. His name was, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of it on the top of my head, but Jesus did have a brother. And so my point is, is that Jesus had siblings as well. His half-brother was James, right? And so this goes to show that Catholicism and Orthodoxy is just man-made tradition. And I hope that you have a humble heart enough to see this. And I hope this video was edifying for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Please go ahead and share your opinions. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. And please share this with someone that it could be edifying for. And uh, I hope this video was edifying for you. And I hope that answers your question if you're just coming to the faith and you're seeking on what to pursue catholicism orthodoxy or just true biblical teachings and true orthodox teachings which are found in the word of god not in greek orthodoxy not in roman catholicism thank you guys so much for watching god bless you guys